Welcome back for episode two of my series on starting a new perennial food forest. You can check out the other videos in the series with the links in the description, and I'll be adding more to that list as I upload more episodes. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and you'd like to follow along with this backyard transformation, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you stay up to date. So last time I showed you some of the first things that we transplanted out here. We've got peach trees, herbs, and some native wildflowers, and uh, some weeds that I need to tend to. So I was concerned that a lot of the things we planted here were too low in the ground because we just had to pull aside the wood chips and plant directly into the native soil. So this time we're going to be fixing that and we have a much better method for future plantings. So the real problem was that we didn't have any finished compost that was ready for transplanting young seedlings. And I didn't want to go buy any or pay to have it delivered because I'm trying to use on-site resources wherever I can. And so we planted those things a few weeks ago and now we have more things that are ready to come out. The compost is still not quite ready yet, so I had to figure out a different option. When I was digging into the wood chip pile recently to spread out more mulch, I pulled the chips aside to look at the soil underneath. I wasn't too surprised to find some top-notch soil teeming with earthworms and other soil critters. And I could tell, given how crumbly it was, that it had a good percentage of worm castings. So I decided to dig up some of the topsoil to use that for transplanting new residents to the food forest. I know this sounds rather upsetting, and at first I wasn't sure about doing it because I know it's not a good idea to disturb the soil's ecosystem. And we would also be digging up more deeply buried weed seeds and introducing those to the new garden area. But I rationalized that this is just a one-time thing, I'm just taking soil from here, moving it over there, and I'm never going to till it again. Besides, we're not planning to grow anything in this area anyway, not for a while. We're probably just gonna keep using this for wood chip storage. Also, what better soil to use than something that's from nearly the same location? It won't be identical, as any soil scientist can tell you, but it's better than having to go buy soil from somewhere else. That soil will be very similar to this, which means that the plants will have a better chance to spread their roots down and out to find more nutrients and water. So first I figured it would be a good idea to fix the planting holes for most of the plants that we brought out here already. This was also a tough decision because it gave the plants another big shock, but I knew it would be better than leaving them so low in the ground. I carefully pulled up the plants that were in the most trouble added some topsoil, and replanted them with the soil slightly mounded up around them. They're already looking a little bit better now that they have some loose soil to spread out their roots. As long as we keep adding organic matter to the surface here, the soil underneath will eventually look the way it did under the wood chip pile. So now that those are all fixed, we can plant some new natives. We've got Black-Eyed Susans, and Prairie Blazing Star, and wild lupin, and we'll do these first. They are a legume, and they're gonna go around the root zone of the peach trees to help give them some more nitrogen. So we're gonna plant some of these lupins on this side of the peach tree, and we can leave the other side open for planting some other things. We've already pulled aside a lot of the wood chips and mulch, so now we just have to add some more topsoil. All right, that should be good, so now we can put probably three or four in each spot and we'll still have plenty for the other tree as well. Not gonna give them too much because we're gonna get some rain later this afternoon, but we can kind of level out the rest of this mulch here. So I'll do the same thing around the other peach tree and then I can find a spot for some of these others. I'm not going to plant all of them because most of them are not quite ready yet. I had to stratify the seeds for all these in moist paper towels in the refrigerator for quite some time 
and when it was close to the required stratification time for those, I tried planting a few seeds of each of these just to see if it worked, and what do you know? So that means that they are at different stages of growth, and these few are ready to plant now. These will have to wait a little bit longer. Since these are all perennials, they will come back each year and fill out these areas a bit more. This first year of planting is probably going to be the most work we'll have to do in the food forest, especially since I'm having to dig up more topsoil just to plant these. And we will be adding more to the food forest and expanding it, of course. But after that, we can just watch these plants return every year and we'll only have to worry about maintenance. Well, that should do it for now. Another batch of transplants ready to do what they do in their new home. So for the next episode, I will be talking about sunlight and location since those go well together. But I should probably do an update on the main garden before that because it is popping right now. Everything has been planted in there, so now it's just a matter of keeping everything safe and happy and healthy and enjoying the harvest. So thank you very much for watching. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.